Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Criterion Connection. I'm Wade. And I'm Joe. And we're here to talk about a Wes Anderson film. Yes, we are doing a Wes Anderson film. I know, it's rare that we do one. We did Bottle Rocket, and we've done... Fantastic, Fantastic Mr. Fox. Fantastic Mr. Fox, yes. We have not done the other ones. I think every Wes Anderson film is on Criterion now. Yeah, um, they're quite rare on Criterion collections. Yeah, very. Especially Life Aquatic. I've never seen that, like, in print. <laughs> Especially Royal Tenenbaums. That's impossible to find in print. Definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, so we're doing Moonrise Kingdom from 2012. It's a movie that I keep forgetting that he did. I always think it's like, I always get that confused with, like, other indie movies from, like, 2015. Yeah, like the, the Wes Anderson copycats. Yes. Um, this is very, well, let me ask Joe, um, we're, we're both very lukewarm on Wes Anderson. To me, it hits, it's like hit and miss with me sometimes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it really hits on me, the humor and everything. I'm really digging it or it just falls flat for me. Right. So is that about the same? I had said that Bottle Rocket was the only one I liked and it's because it's the least Wes Anderson of the Wes Anderson films. But I I was ple pleasantly surprised by this one. I, I was too. I enjoyed this one. Yeah, this is very enjoyable. It's very, you know, other movies that are like kind of not maybe not inspired by it, but they're very similar. It's like stuff like Taika Waititi's like uh, Jojo Rabbit, mm -hmm. or even his previous film uh, Hunt for the Wilder People. Yeah. The very like kind of like the earnest kid. I mm -hmm. think Wes Anderson does well with children, like. Well, yeah. And the quirkiness of children. One of his motifs is, you know, having children smarter than the adults. Oh, yeah. Um, that's something that, you know, he likes to explore. And I, you know, I'll give him credit for it. You know, because a lot of people play children as not as bright as adults. Like, they don't know enough. But kids are a lot smarter than people give them credit for. They're a lot more sophisticated than people give them credit for, especially emotionally. Yeah. And and Wes Anderson just in Moonrise Kingdom at least really explores that. Um, you know, the complicated nature of growing up and and just not being understood. Yes. And I think it really works in this film. Like, we got a lot of our Wes Andersonisms out really early. Yeah, like, you get With the, all the, the panning shots yeah. and the sy symmetry. And the love of yellow. Uh, the mustard yellow. <laughs> he and, loves and yellow. other, like, mustard yellow and red. Uh, the quirky characters, the camera movements, mm -hmm. the, the hard cuts, the cursive credits. That's in cursive. Once we get through the early parts and, and we get to our kind of inciting incident, Shikusky leaving the scouts we are khaki scouts yeah we are we're done with a lot of that like really over the top like stereotypical wes anderson stuff yeah and we're now in the movie itself. what i like about it is you don't really meet like the main focal i mean you see them in the opening credits but you don't meet the main focal characters until like 20 minutes to the movie? Yeah. And, and but you're here saying what I like about it is like you have Edward Norton playing the the, the cat the camp uh the scout leader. leader. The scout leader. Uh he's great in this. Yeah. Um and he's just going and they're basically gonna search for Sam. And we get all the backstory of like, you know, he's kind of a troubled kid. Mm -hmm. Uh he has he's an he's an orphan. Stuff like that. You're learning about this without even meeting the character. And, and I think that's very cool. And and not only that, and, and I think it really reflects well like we don't meet these characters really until later into the movie and neither do the characters. The characters themselves don't know them. Like like how Edward Norton's character is like, that wasn't in the register. I didn't know he was an orphan. Yeah. You know, and... You're and, learning as, as they're learning. And then the parents um, of... Uh, Bill Murray... Yeah, yeah, Bill Murray and Francis McDormand. Yeah. I was trying to think of the other... The, they were the, the bishops. The girl's name. Susie. Susie. Yes. Susie Bishop. Um, the parents, they don't really know her, and which is why they consider her troubled. Um, and they bought that book, Coping with a Troubled Child, 
that that she finds and is basically feeling even more alienated like it's already weird enough yeah when you're becoming like a teenager there's a lot and, of and life's throwing these challenges at you yeah there's a but lot to, of... but to have that on top of it it's like oh i'm even weird to my parents there's a lot like there's <laughs> um the letters that they write to each other mm-hmm great storytelling there you learn mm. <clears throat> basically he you know sam is an orphan he doesn't have a family really right. and he's kind of lashing out internally mm-hmm. and then you see Susie, who has a family it's a little more controlling and she's kind of um, acting out like outwardly mm-hmm. and it's kind of this cool like relation of the two different kind of like nurture kind of um concepts yeah and, and, it, and, and it plays into like you know their their growth as characters. Yeah, and and they kind of fall for each other because they're both misunderstood. And what we get in that it, that is one of the best scenes is where they're reading the letters back and yes, forth. Yes, that, that, oh, great scene. Uh, without like completing sentences, like he's cutting off because of. I mean, I assume it's like rapid fire, like letters yeah. back and forth. Um, but I, I, it's it's such a great scene because it's showing two characters connecting that you know they're just completely misunderstood by everybody else, but they get each other just because they're willing to listen to each other. I will say that you say that's the best scene, but the best scene is clearly Bill, uh, Bill Murray taking off his shoe and throwing it at Edward Norton. Yes. That part killed me. I was not expecting him just to throw his shoe at him. That's that's the gif of the movie. Yeah. Um. Of course, this has the cast of characters. Some newer ones, and some, you know, classic one like Jason Schwartzman's in it. Bill Murray's in it. Mm-hmm. It's Dor- Dermot's in it. Um, but there's some people like Bruce Willis is in this. And Bruce Willis, it's, it's refreshing seeing Bruce Willis try. Yeah, and he does a great job in his role. Playing a... Captain Sharp. Yeah, playing Captain Sharp, but he's playing a character that's lonely, that thinks he's found somebody in uh mrs bishop and they've been seeing each other on the side but ultimately gets let down and and it's like there's such a great scene between Susie and her mother she's like i know what you do with that sad stupid policeman (laughs) and she's like well he's not stupid (laughs) maybe a little sad yeah and and it and it comes out like you know like it, he he really does convey those emotions and he is a little bit more complicated than even Francis McDormand's character understands that he he understands the dynamic and kind of already knew that she was going to let him down uh we also forgot what the other character um actor i was not expecting harvey Cattell was in this mm-hmm. um i do like the kind of the action of the movie it's just like these kids you know, and they're, it's like they're this wide-eyed kind of imagination like it's told via like i guess the wes anderson look really works when it's like in the eyes of children mm-hmm. like the color and the quirkiness and stuff like that and i do like how like yeah edward orn's an idiot in this but he, but his heart is there. Yeah, he's so earnest in in the film because he he's trying, but it just not it's just not working, and and like he realizes that he hasn't really like he's been trying to emulate Harvey Keitel, but he's realizing that that's not who he is. That he needs to connect with the kids, and that's what ultimately happens at the end with the search party. Is like Harvey Keitel ends up going out of commission and then he's the one that has to pick up everybody and be like all right we gotta all stick together we need to do the right you know we need to find the kids and all that stuff the third act is crazy there's kids getting bit by lightning yep there's a big storm um (laughs) bruce willis picks up like a mace (laughs) it's like what um it's very fun of course this character is like lazy eye Mm -hmm. so funny um it's it's strange that i'm liking the wes anderson film this much it's, that uh, wasn't Bottle Rocket. <laughs> I feel like this is doing the turn because honestly, the other two movies I've seen of his is Royal Tenenbaums and Rushmore, mm-hmm. and I haven't seen Royal Tenenbaums since I was like fifteen. But then again, I was fifteen and like like. We also oh. have to do Grand Budapest Hotel. Yes, and there's also Life Aquatic and Isle of Dogs. Isle of Dogs, um, Darjeeling. So, Joe, what do you think? Uh, would you recommend this movie to uh, the audience? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd recommend it. 
it's not like a wholehearted like go out of your way to watch it it ain't deep cover from last time no yeah it's this is more of a you know if it's on go ahead and give it a shot like it, it's really it, it is worth sticking through that early opening sequence and kind of learning about these characters as we go yeah i'm also going to recommend it. it's kind of a gateway um uh, Russ, Wes Anderson. It's not hardcore into the Wes Anderson. When Wes Ander, I can't even say it. Wes Anderisms. Wes Anderson isms. There's a lot of those um, in a lot of his movies, but this is light. It's very light. It's a good gateway if you want to get into it. Um, if you have never seen a Wes Anderson film ever, yeah. um, I will say it's it's a pleasure. It's only ninety minutes, ninety some minutes, brisk, flies by. It's not dragging at any points. I think it's uh, definitely a recommend. But that's our thoughts on Wes Anderson's Moonrise Kingdom from 2012. Let us know in the comments section below what you think about this film. Or any other, what's another? What's the next Wes Anderson film? Because we have a lot to do. Mm -hmm. What's the next one we're going to do? You can make that suggestion now. Right now. In the comment section right now. And while you're doing that, hit that subscribe button. If you're not already, hit that like Hit that share button. Share it to your friends, your family, your your scout leader. Your blog. Your blog. Your vlog. Your Zanga. Whatever. You can write the whole URL in a letter to uh, to, to the girl that you're writing to. Yes, the one that's dressed like a raven. That one. Yeah, that one. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, and also follow our, letter, our Letterbox playlist. You know, Letterbox. If you have one, search Criterion Connection. And uh, there's a whole list of all the movies you've done. Have fun with it. Make a little, a little check mark on every single one you've done. Have you seen them all? We'll see. But I'll about do it. Um, so until next time, I'm Wade. And I'm still Joe. And we will see you later.